Hey everyone, this is Scott, and today is not a sad day. Even though you may see tears, you will be seeing a celebration of my mom's life, and that is what I intend to do. Um, I've been wanting to do this video for so long, but um, it has been um, very painful to go through pictures and you know decide exactly what I want to do, and I just decided to you know no more of making it perfect. I just want to do this to honor my mom. My mom was an amazing person. Um, she was born in 1937. She lived to the age of 84. Um, my mom had Alzheimer's for, well, she had dementia for probably about 10, 15 years. And the last five to six years, she had um, vascular dementia, dementia um, with um, last, with, you know, extreme Alzheimer's um, she <laughs> she lost her memory slowly but that's the way she wanted it to be she wanted to make that time with me and my two sisters as long as possible so she chose when she was in her right mind um, that she knew that she was starting to become a little forgetful to take medicine that would you know prolong this that was her decision so I honor that um, she was in a nursing home for five years before she passed. Uh, she had to go in because she just kept falling and, um, you know, a fractured vertebrae. Actually, three in her back that she was still walking around on before we found out what it was because they, she was misdiagnosed at the hospital. But anyway, <laughs> this woman was still driving around with a broken back. My mom was sassy. She was fiery. And she loved everyone. There was no one that was a stranger to my mom. My mom loved people. My mom loved her family. My lo mom loved her children, me and my two si sisters, with so much unconditional love that it was ridiculous. Were things always right, always good? No. When are they ever but looking back on it, I see that the bottom line is everything was done because she wanted to do what she thought was best for me. So I lit this um, red candle. Red is her favorite color, okay? And if you stuck with me this long, please stick with me to the end because I have some special things that do have to do with the tarot that um, happened in the last week of her life. I just don't want this video to be too long. Um, but I do want to show a few things. Um, so this is my mom. Um, the picture's a little older, as you can see. This is from December of 86. So we call mom Betty Boop. Her name was Betty. And as you see, I bought this for her. And you can see how the, the old phone and, you know, she's, oh, I'm on camera. She was a, such a funny lady. And she just lit up the room wherever she was until she's mad. And when she got mad, she got mad all over. And she would tell you. That's just how my mom was. But if she was mad, it was because she thought that either someone was doing something to her children or was doing something that she did not perceive to be right. And I respect that. I do respect that. This is the house that my my mom grew up in. Okay. So beautiful, beautiful house. And I actually lived next door to this house for about 13 years. Um, when my mom moved back up here from Roanoke. Um, this was kind of my house too. And this is a painting by one of my mom's best friends who has passed on as well. So what I want to do is get to that last week. Because that is where the magic starts to happen. Okay, and It's taken me this long to get it out. She died on January 6th. I might be repeating myself and I'm going to be leaving out stuff. That's okay. I'm just going to do the best I can. Because I want to do this for her so bad. And honor her. The best way that I know how. Okay, guys. Um, so, we were called in on um, December 30th as a family. Um, 
she had been in hospice for about two to three weeks. Um, she was going down slowly. And then um, about the time that COVID hit, that separation from us um, was um, not great for her. So uh, she had vascular dementia and it can go real slow. And then all of a sudden it takes off and boom, it's, it, it, it's just crazy how fast it takes off and how fast her memory was going. And um, by the end of, uh, we put her in hospice in, I don't know, November. And then December, um, we were called in as family. She was still, she was still alert. And they called us in because they said she was transitioning. That was December 30th. My mom held on until January 6th okay, of this year. And um, she was lucid for probably three to four days. And then you see little movements go back and forth. You know, and um, you would see her eyes open. And you know what? I, I could see her transitioning. And I knew she was transitioning. And I could feel the changes going on around. I'm an empath. She was an empath. We just had that soul connection, right? I believe she was one of my twin flames. You know, you don't twin flame doesn't have to be a relationship with, with someone you're romantically involved with. It can be a person that is just, just gets you and you get them. My mom was my twin flame. So, during that last week that she gave us, I did the night shift. My sisters, who I love so much and were so supportive of me, they, um, they took the day shift. I took the night shift. And we sat there with mom. And, you know, she could talk a little bit. Um, but I think the last thing she said to me was probably around January 31st. And she opened her eyes. Just a little. And she's, I said, hi, sweet mama. And she said, hi, darling. <laughs> and those were the last words that my mom spoke to me. Uh, but I had a whole week to talk to her. And I knew that she could hear me. And even hospice said, they said, the last thing you go is the hearing. So keep talking to her. And even though her mind was poisoned, it actually had holes in it from what the Alzheimer's did. Her face was sunken. Um, she didn't le look like herself at all. Her kidneys had shut down. Uh, this wonderful, special lady that was brought into my life, she lasted six days without food or water. And you say, why didn't you give her food or water? We did. But she started choking. And they said, if we give her any more, she will choke to death. So we said, okay, do what you have to do. She, her kidneys had shut down. She was not going to the restroom, nothing. But she held on for six days. And I know she did that for us kids. She did that for me. And we even told her, if you need to you go ahead and go, mom. My mom will go when she's ready to go. Yeah, she, 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 um, she was, she was going to go, but she, I believe she chose the time. And I'll tell you a little bit later why I, I think that. And that's just my philosophy. You know, that's just the way I feel. Um, I believe she knew she was going and she had to choose. She had a few days that she could choose. And she took the longest one. This was her best friend, who was my grandmother. My grandmother passed away in 1999 from Alzheimer's that my mom had to put her in the nursing home for her. And the same thing happened with me and my mom. Um, I don't even know if I've shown these already because I've done a few videos and had to scratch them. So I apologize if you haven't seen these before. This is my sister, my sister's wedding. My mom was just so beautiful and loving. Here's the house again. And again, I, I just want to try to stay on that last week because that's when, that's when the, the, the miracle started happening. Um, 
I was alone with her at night. So, you know, mom, I was brought up Baptist. You know, it took her like 15 years to accept that I was gay. Um, but one day just, you know, and after telling me, you know, in the beginning that, you know, I might as well be a murderer. That's just how she was raised. I don't hold that against her. Right. Because before her mind went bad, I was sitting over here in the living room and I was looking at the TV and it was like men's basketball or something. And they were showing up close, you know, pictures and mom looked over and she goes, do you think he saw it? And I was like, it, what, what did you say? What, what did you say? She said, well, I just want to know if you want to think he's hot. I think he's pretty cute. It's probably like a 20 year old, 25 year old or something. I was like, well, actually, mom, I mean, that he's not really my type. Well, what's your type? I was like, um, well, there's always exceptions. So don't, you know, I don't want to be getting any stigmas over me. And I'm like, I kind of prefer blondes and redheads, you know, and light eyes. And she goes, oh, I do too. But I like a tall, handsome man too. I was like, what in the world is happening? And from that point on, my mom talked to me about being gay and she told me that when I was born let me flip something around real quick here if that's okay with you I can I flip this camera I don't know I don't think it's gonna let me but I need to show this picture to you <laughs> this is my mom and me as a baby I was less than a month old I believe from the time stamp on the back my mom told me right before her mind started to go from the Alzheimer's that she knew when I was born that I was different and she knew all along and she just couldn't accept it because that wasn't accepted in the way she was brought up but she did come to accept me why one thing unconditional love so I did some readings for her, okay, while I was there alone at night. And um, I have a couple of, I brought a bunch of decks. And I just, I just reached for the ones that I thought, you know, might be the easiest on her. She had no idea I was into tarot. And I know what she would say, you know, she'd be like, oh, that's something the devil. You know, but not the mom that was transcending. Because what I came to realize was that even though that brain that had holes in it from the Alzheimer's, because she was transitioning, a lot of that had been healed. And she started, even though she became unconscious, you know, three, four days before, and she went into a permanent coma, you know, about two days before. But I'm going to back up to about four days before because that's when the magic started. Um, and I could tell that she was transitioning and she was halfway there and halfway here. She was in two, she was in two, um, different places at the same time. And sometimes she'd look over and she'd just have her eyes just barely open. My mom's eyes were as dark as mine. And all I could see was white light coming out of her eyes. She was transitioning, guys. She was transitioning. And she gave us seven days to be with her and to say what we needed to say to get everything out, you know. Ask for, for, for her forgiveness for things. Tell her we forgave her for things. And I, um, some of the cards that I pulled, this is from the Muse um, Tarot, and I pulled out the Emperor. And that's how I realized that she was in control. And she was going to go when she was ready to go. Now, she knew she was going. But I think that um, she was going because at the time that she went, because she chose that exact time. I believe she had a timeline Okay, this is the time that you have. And she chose that last timeline that, that she possibly could to be with us. She was in no pain at all. Um, they guaranteed us that 100%. Okay, and 
I brought this sassy little deck with me because it always falls out. If Shauna is watching this from Six of Wands, Shauna, I love the deck you gave me for my birthday, but this thing is just... It's like mouthy, it's sassy, and it falls on my feet. It wants to be called all the time. It wants me to use it. None of my other decks is the intuitive night goddess. And I pulled this card from my mom and said, well, what is this? I don't. And I started describing it. I'm like, well, there's a beautiful woman. She's got wings and she's tall and she's confident. And it wasn't until after her passing that I realized that this was her. In the state that she was in. She was awakening finally. She was awakening. I pulled from the mystical moments. This quickly became my mom's deck. Because she connect Just everything connected so well. And I looked at this card. And it's just like spirit was telling me. Because our, our spirits were connected. My mom is. I believe she's still connected to me. Um, but the, the spirit was connected. And I said, we got the ten of flowers. You know, because she didn't know tarot. And I, I just explained it as, I said, this is a, a lady who's had a very hard life. And she's carrying all these things on her back. And she doesn't want to give up. Because I knew my mom did not want to leave us. Because she was afraid that we couldn't handle it on our own. Um, and this was another one and this is my mom I mean this is just her you saw the picture of, of her holding me as a baby there's a baby here this, this was just her saying my love for you is unconditional and it's never ending and it's nurturing and it's going to be there forever um, I got the eight of cups and this is again just me and her in her own private room at the nursing home. They moved her out of her room with her roommate as she was passing. Um, and I said, "Well, it looks like there's a lady, and she's walking. She's like, a, it's a ladybug, and she's she's going." And I'm telling this to my mom, and I said, "You know, she's going to this other place, but she doesn't want to go. She doesn't want to leave behind things, but I can see beautiful things behind her." where she needs to go and where she is going and it's going to be beautiful and it's going to be wonderful and um i talked to one of my friends and um she is a clairvoyant and um ginger if you're watching this hi um so my friend ginger um i talked to her on the phone one day and it was while my mom was transitioning i went out to the courtyard and to talk to her for just like five minutes. And she said, tell your mom this. She said, get into a place where it's just you and your mom. And my sisters were there at this point because it was during the day. And I just came early. Um, so she said, get your mom. And she said, if you have to, just bow your head like you're praying. You know, and she said, but talk to your mother. And... She said, talk to your mother and tell her whatever you need to ask her. But tell her that there's three butterflies waiting for her. And she has three butterflies she's trying to protect. Guys, there are butterflies all over these cards. I mean, everywhere. And all the readings I've done since are butterflies everywhere. Um, not all, but a lot. So, tell her that there's butterflies. And they are... Her children that she does not want to leave behind. But if she looks closer, there's one big, huge butterfly. And then two smaller butterflies behind. And she's like, I, Scott, I don't know who these people are. And I'm like, no, no, I do. I knew instantly. It was one of the sweetest women that I've ever had the pleasure of knowing in my life. It was my grandma. She was my mom's guardian angel. It is my mom's guardian angel. And then I knew right away who the other two butterflies were. They were waiting for her to cross over and to greet her. And that was my, <laughs> look at this. Look, at this. it's even in their own signature. This is my great-grandfather, Cornette, And this is my great-grandmother, 
And my mom loved these two people so much. This man was so kind and gentle to my mother. Um, my mom didn't have the best childhood because of her father. But this was her father's father. And he had a heart of gold. And he was, is now one of her guardian angels. And so is my great-grandmother who died of cancer. And my mom used to help. Uh, take care of her before she passed, right, when she was little, because they lived together at that time. So, long story short, those were her three guardian angels, and now she's with them, right? Um, so she said, tell her, tell her about the butterflies, and that those, the butterflies are waiting, and whenever she's ready, she's going to see someplace so beautiful, and she's going to go and... It's going to be nothing like she's ever thought or seen before. So I went into the room and my sister was over on this, the side that I needed to get to, which was the left-hand side. Why did I want to get to the left-hand side? Your left is receptive if you are right-handed. So I wanted to get to that left hand. And I just stood there for a minute and I was like, um, well, I'll just start rubbing sanitizer on my hand. And all of a sudden, my sister just popped up and she's like, oh, I forgot I've got to text my daughter. I'm just going to be just a second. Scotty, come, can you come here and hold her hand? It was the left side. My other sister had the right side and had her hand. My mom was 85 to 95% unresponsive. She would push down covers, pull up covers, and we figured that out because there was nothing left in her but medicine. The, the medicine that was, you know, keeping her calm and it makes you warm, okay? So, um, she was warm, so she was pushing down covers. So, um, I got a rose quartz. It just called to me. So, I got this. Not this one, but one just like it. And I took it and I put it in my mom's hand and she started shaking like this. And I tell my, my sister's like, mm -hmm. and she started, it, it, she started shaking. And I was like, oh my goodness. I was like, mom, I'm so sorry. I'm not saying this out loud. I was communicating telepathically with her at this time. And I said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I put it down. On the table next to her. My mother. Who hadn't talked in like a day. Had her eyes closed. Barely, barely responsive. Lunged over. And grabbed this crystal. This, the, the crystal of the rose quartz. And I put it back in her hand. And then she stopped shaking. The energy from that was so strong. That it was making it she it was giving it was making her whole body vibrate, guys. And when when I grabbed her hand, I could feel that energy between us. And I just made like there was a white light, right? And there was a white light going um, to her. And I said, "Mom, just imagine a white light coming to you from me, and it's all the love I have for you." And I, I said, I need to talk to you. And I said, I know you can't respond, but I, I just need to talk to you. And I could just feel, you know, acceptance. And yes, of course, you know, I just felt good about it. And so I told her this, and I'll share this with you. It's very personal, but at the same time, I feel that I need to share it because maybe it will help some someone. Um... I said, Mom, I said, there's one thing that I don't understand. I said, you have loved me so much and done everything for me, you know. You've been my rock. Still is. But you never told me that it was okay for me to go on without you. And I don't know if I can. I said, but I can if I know that I don't have to and that you will be my guardian angel. I said, Mom, you've got the guardian angels and 
I need all four of you. I said, but I need you to be my guardian angel and never leave me. Never leave me. And I said, Mom, I know that you can't respond right now. I said, but if that's okay with you, if it's okay for me to go on. Can you maybe, with your left hand that I'm holding, just, just maybe squeeze my hand a little bit? Guys, she didn't squeeze my hand. She went, boom, up in the air. Her hand was flying up into the air, saying yes. I said, if you be my guardian angel, just do that. She threw her hand. It actually hurt my shoulder. It hurt my shoulder. It was so strong. And then after that, I said, Mom, I, do you see three butterflies? No response. Her hands had dropped again. I said, do you see three butterflies? I said, those, that's Grandma and Grandpa Connette and your mom are there. And I said, Mama, can you see those butterflies? <laughs> and my sister was just looking because, you know, when your hand is reactive, like the other one's going to react a little bit too. So her right one was half up, and the one that I had was up in the air, and my sister's just going, and I said, it's okay, it's okay. We're just, we're just, I'm praying with her. She's like, I'm okay. She was answering me. She heard, and she knew exactly. So when I was alone with her uh, later that night, I believe, um, I brought in some angel cards, right? So this is Kyle... Grace, um, who I just adore. All I have all his decks. I just adore this guy. These are the angel um, prayers. Okay. I showed her some of these cards. Of course, her eyes are closed. But I told her what they said. I drew them for her. And then I put them in her hand. When I put them in her hand, she started grabbing it like this. Grabbing it like she just couldn't. She wasn't letting go. She was trying to get that light and that angel closer and closer to her. And so, Raphael. And then, she almost tore Shandalfon apart. Like, she wanted, she liked this blonde man. But she, this was, this was speaking to her. And it says, thank you, Sandalphon, for delivering my prayers to heaven. And my mom believed in heaven, so I believe that's where she went. But I also believe that she knows the truth about so many things now that, you know, unfortunately, re religion tainted for her. But, God, sorry. Some other cards that I got, um, Listen deeply. And I thought I was pulling this for her. And then I realized she was pulling them for me. She was pulling them for me. And I actually put them in her hand. Like this, face down. Put them in her hand. Or my hand, I'm sorry. And I had her hand over top. And you know how naturally when you place a hand over... That it starts moving a little bit. Or the cards start moving. She picked these cards. They, Her hand would stop on the card. That I'm about to show you. The first one was listen deeply. Look how it's a guardian angel. Listen deeply. She was telling me she's going to listen deeply. She's going to be there for me. And then the second card I got was signs and reminders. And that was signs and reminders. Oh, my God, they've been everywhere. <laughs> like, my spiritual life has opened up so much because of this lady and the week that she gave me, the love that she gave me. And then I was realizing she was picking the cards, and I said, Mom, can you just pick one more card for me? It doesn't matter. I just, I, I feel like you have one more thing to tell me before you go. And I want you to tell me. And I put the cards in front of her. And she actually moved this card towards me. So I picked it up. And this is what I saw. 
<laughs> Sorry guys, I'm very emotional still. She confirmed to me that she was my guardian angel, and she would be. And so I told her, I said, Mom, because my sisters were just, and, and you know, um, reasonably, you know, of course, just, you know, torn to pieces. And I was too, but I was trying to stay very strong when I was around them. Because I didn't want them to know, you know, how bad I was hurting too. And I, wanted, I told my mom, I said, Mom, whenever you're ready to go, it's okay. It's okay. I said, I will be okay because now I know I got you with me. And you'll never leave me. Have I felt that all the time? No, but that's because I get in my head. But guys, I have felt that so many times since she's passed. I have actually fallen back into this chair and felt her wrap her arms around me. Did I see it? No. Did I feel it? Yes. She'd wrap her arms around me like she did when, when I was a child. And I would sit in her lap, in her recliner, and she would wrap back. It was the same exact. Same exact thing. So getting back to what I said, was going to say. Um, I told her, look, I said, we, we're not here at the same time, so I'm not either day. I said... Mom, I said, I have all this reassurance from you because of, you've given me these signs and you've given me these messages and you've told me you'll be with me. I said, but the girls don't know this. My sisters don't know this. And I said, they're taking it really hard. And I said, but they're going to be okay. And I will, I will do whatever I can to be okay. And I will do whatever I can to be the man that you would want me to be. And now I know she wants to be me. <laughs> she wants me to be me. And that's the most unconditional love thing that there is. And of course the Rose Quartz represents unconditional love. She had this behind her pa her uh, pillow when she went. But I, I said the girls are not handling it well. And reasonably. And I said, but they will be okay. I said, but... I know, you know, this is your decision or it's God's decision, you know, source, I was thinking, but I had to say God. I I don't know, but if you have the choice, I said, I think, and it's, this is just my advice, I think it would be better if you went when the girls were here, you know, with you, because I don't think they can handle it not being here. And it's okay if I'm not here. On January 6th. My mom passed away at 7.45 p.m. With both of my sisters who just had a feeling they needed to, to be near her. They climbed up on the bed with her. I was 10 minutes away. 10 minutes away, guys. Don't feel bad for me, though. These are tears of joy because I told her it was okay. And I got to share other m moments even after, you know, that my sisters couldn't handle, like when they took the body out. When they, you know, you don't realize the grief and the things you go through. But it was okay because I knew she was, she, she was still with me and I could feel that she was still with me. But she took her last breath 10 minutes before I got to the nursing home to take over for the night shift. Guys, there's been so many miracles in my life the last month, month and a half. When my mom passed away and my two sisters left, they couldn't stay any longer. They just couldn't stand to, you know, have them come and take the body and watch that. But I, I told them that I wanted to. And when both of my sisters left, the hospice nurse looked at me and she said, your life will never be the same. And I said, I know that. I know, I know that. But guys, it has been such a blessing. And for that last week that she gave me, I would not take a million, billion dollars. 
I'm not usually this emotional for the new people that are watching and I know some of you are. Thank you so much for being here and just listening to my story. It means so much to me. This is healing for me and I hope this is healing for you as well. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. It's been a very hard month and a half. Um, I suffer from depression, so I took time off work. I'm going back tomorrow, and I'm going to do it because that's what my mom would want me to be. That's what she would want me to do is to be strong. She would want me also to grieve because not grieving, not crying, that's dangerous because you could get stuck with that grief and that hurt forever. And where, yeah, I'm going to be grieving for her my whole life, I'm grieving for the person that she was, you know, that body that nurtured me, that carried me, that carried me in her womb. That unconditional, that those hugs that came from that body, with that unconditional love all the time, right? That is what I miss. I miss that physical, and it is it is bad. I ain't gonna lie to you. If your mother is still alive and you have a great relationship a good relationship even a bad relationship guys tell your mom how much you love her be in the present moment and real quick before i end i was digging out some stuff yesterday um under my bed <laughs> And this used to be my mom's room, and it was her bed, and it's one of those nice adjustable ones, so it took me about three years to move in here because I just didn't want to do it, but I finally did it. I've made it my own, and I know that's okay with her, but when I looked at this, I fell to pieces because this was drawn by my mom. My mom did love cards. She just loved cards like this, and she, I don't know if you can see the green so the green here is where she colored in, and she colored this, and it says, trust God to provide all you need. And on the, on the back, it says to Scotty from Mom, I love you dearly, Betty. She would have never wanted me to call her Betty, but it was because her mind was, you know, starting to go a little bit. But even then, she put this under her bed for me to find it. Along with this, I don't know, you think, oh, well, you're not being this. Yes, I am. Be joyful always. I am so joyful for all the love that it just overwhelms me. Yes, I'm hurt. Yes, I'm, you know, grieving. But that's to heal. That helps you heal. And then I got grace and peace be yours in abundance. And she colored all these guys. She did this. She loved to color. And as you probably know, you know, with Alzheimer's, they go back. You know, um, it's like it, it's like when you're dying from Alzheimer's, you go back to being a toddler and then you go back to being an infant. I went to the dollar store one day about... Um, Two weeks before she passed, and she was still, you know, lucid, of course, but didn't, you know, didn't really know a lot about who we were, or just knew we were important, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and I was looking for a lamb because she had a lamb when she was little. She just loved that lamb. She's always talking about Cleo the lamb. So I wanted to get her a lamb, right? And I went through the dollar store. There's all kinds of stuffed animals. There's no. There was no lamb, but there was a freaking rainbow llama, and I was like, a what is that a llama? Is that alpaca? I'm like, oh, it's a llama, and you can tell me it's an alpaca, and that's fine, but I'm still going to call it a llama, and I was called to get this stuffed animal for my mom, and so I brought this to my mom, and she looked at it. And she goes, oh, that's the most beautiful thing. I oh, look at that. And my mom, you know, she was she was being a toddler again. But she was joyful a lot of the time as a you know this uh, this final stage. And she goes, a boogie 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 boogie. <laughs> she did that to this llama, and I have it on tape <laughs> that she did that. 
I have the video. I'm so glad. Take videos of your parents. Take videos. Take so many pictures, it wears you out. So, I kept this, and um, her energy is just all over it, guys. It's all over it. And so, my two stones, which my original rose quartz was lost. And then, I looked on the internet. And I was looking, you know, and, and then I don't know who told me or if it was the internet or what. I said, what does it mean when you lose a stone? It says, it means you're supposed to move on, on to another stone. The very next night I was in um, this fabulous new community, which I hope a lot of you are watching from that. And I believe it was, um, it was either Deanne or Kelly. I cannot remember which. And I apologize. But they were doing a reading for me about my mom, you know. And this was, you know, right after she passed. And one of the one of those ladies pulled up Malachite. Pulled out Malachite. And so I looked up real quick what Malachite mean. I have a crystal deck. As many of you know. Sorry, it's just warning me on battery. We we're okay though. Because we're we're wrapping up. I thank you so much if you stuck with me this long. I love you guys so much. As most of you know, Malachite, and I bought this you know, after. Malachite is for healing. So she already told me that she had unconditional love. And when I came back home from her passing away, I knew that there was something I wanted to give her. You know, and I, I understand it's just the body, but it was a, the vessel that loved me, right? And I understand she's no longer in that body, but I wanted to honor that body. And um, what I did is I found a baby rose quartz. And um, with the permission, of course, of the funeral you know, director, um, I placed her right hand. And just, you know, rose it up and stuck that little baby quart, red quartz, or sorry, rose quartz, in her hand and left it there. And she she took that with her. Her vessel took that with her, right? But it just broke my heart when I lost that. And then when I saw that, I'm like, I'm supposed to get another one. And I got this one as well so that I would have both. And I have felt so much energy from these. These things vibrate. They, I, I just can't even tell you. And guys, it has been the hardest, most painful thing I've ever been through. It's also been the most miraculous because I have had so many confirmations. I've just told you a couple. Just a couple. That there is no doubt in my mind that she is with spirit. That she is she is whole again. Thy mind is whole again. And I pulled these cards. I forgot to show you these. And then I got a reading that I wanted to do for you from my mother. Okay? She wanted to leave... Whoever's watching this, a message. But this is not it. But this is the message that I learned. I bought these cards after uh, my mom passed. They're the Talking to Heaven, I believe. Yes, Talking to Heaven by uh, James Van Prague. And these are some of the messages that, that have been coming out to me, guys. So, I am learning over here. I have a new understanding we are so connected. My death was painless. Please don't worry. Or hold on to guilt. <laughs> I am sitting right next to you. Now I have no pain. She had been in pain for 15, 20 years. And even when I was a kid, she had things going on. She's no longer in that suffering body. No longer. How about this? This popped up. Of course it did. There's the signs again. <laughs> How about this? Person with Alzheimer's now says, My mind is free. <laughs> How beautiful is that? How beautiful. 
is that. And I always give you a good night kiss. And she did. She never left the house or was gone for any amount of time without telling me that she loved me. <sighs> this bell she kept here in this room when I took care of her and when she started to get bad um, as far as the illness and the back problems she couldn't get out of bed. She'd ring this bell and sometimes she'd ring it four or five times at night and I would be like oh my word and I would come in here and you know you, you're human you get frustrated and be like, mom what is it and she said, I need my feet tucked in or I need this or I need that you know and I actually tucked her feet in for the last time and it was so special and I'm like I just wish I had one more time to do that <laughs> before um but this has now become part of my altar and if you listen to it, it's almost the same sound as the crystal pyramids, maybe. To me, it is. This is healing for me. My mom's bill. So this goes on my altar. And then, thank you for letting me share that. The last thing I want to share is, right before I did this live, I felt that my mom wanted to do a reading for the people that were for you. For you. And I was like, seriously? I don't know. And so I did it before because, honestly, I didn't have enough faith in myself to pull out the right cards. But I did my new, like, overhand shuffle that I really enjoy and two cards popped out. The first one that pops out that is a message, I believe, from my mother, from source, from maybe from someone that you've lost. I feel this strongly. This is for you. The first was the Ace of Pentacles. Even through the hard times, look how hard it took this flower to come and grow. Even through that, persevere. Keep going because abundance will be yours. The other message that my mom has for you comes from the Queen of Cups. And it's very simple. Very simple. And this is from Mystical Moments. Live with unconditional love to those that are the closest to you. And that's my message from my mom to you. I love you guys. I've got some um, really cool things coming up. So I know this was a tearjerker. Maybe, maybe not. But um, was for me. But... Um, tears are healing. Just remember that there's nothing wrong with tears. Um, but I'm going in a kind of different direction. I'm going to start doing lives again. And I just had to, to, you know, I had to take my grieving time and I'm, I'm still doing it, but it's getting so much easier because of all these things that have helped me getting into tarot that has helped me learning from you all in the community before in the community. Now, this whoever I have learned so much that has helped me to be okay during this time. And that, my friends, is was probably a matter of life and death for me. Because it probably couldn't have gone on if I didn't know what I know now. And had all these beautiful signs and reminders and my friends to tell me that this was unconditional love. That the angels were looking down on my mom. The butterflies were there everywhere. And I know there is no doubt in my mind whatsoever that I am here for a purpose. I'm here for a reason. And I want to help others. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Have fun. Look at some amazing decks together, right? Um, just, just, you know, Share my passion with you guys because you guys are the ones that has the same passion as I do with tarot and with Oracle. And, and um, I'd like to start doing some readings. Who knows? Who knows where this is going to go? But it's the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. And my mom even told me through some other cards um, that, you know, creativity is something that she wants me to delve into. So I'm looking into that. I'm not going to keep going. I just feel a peace that I've said everything I need to say, except for, again, 
I love you guys. I love each and every one of you this day to watch this video. And um, thank you so much for letting me share my mom. This important person in my life with you. And that means everything to me. So thank you. Oh, oh everybody who supported me before it went through bad financial situations because of I couldn't work. You know, while she was dying, I just, uh, you know, I would just burst out in tears and I had to talk to people on the phone. You can't do that when you're bursting out into tears. And I had so many people support me and help me emotionally, financially, physically, you know, help me get to an okay place. Thank you guys so much. And thank you for continuing your support because I need it. Um... But I'm ready to give back, so I'm ready to um, jump into these lives and go back to work and jump into these videos. Maybe a little bit before the lives. I don't know. I'm just um, taking it one step at a time and having patience with myself. Um, so stay tuned. I love you all. Thank you so much for being here with me. Have a wonderful, 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 blessed day, guys. Bye-bye.